And I now give the floor to the representative of Afghanistan. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I congratulate uh, the United States on its uh, successful leadership of the Council this month. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Jan Kubisch, a special representative of the Secretary General for his briefing and for his outstanding leadership of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan. His tireless work over the past several months has been essential as Afghanistan grapples with a challenging election period. As uh, Mr. Kobish's uh, tenure is uh, going to end, I wish him uh, every success in his future endeavor. I also thank the Secretary General and his team for, his, uh, for their support of my country throughout the election process, and also for the Secretary General's recent report on the situation in Afghanistan. On 5th April and 14th June, millions of Afghans cast their votes to elect the future leader of the country, risking their lives and defying Afghanistan's enemies to exercise their democratic rights. In doing so, they demonstrated remarkable bravery in the face of terrorism and a stalwart commitment to a peaceful, democratic, and prosperous Afghanistan. Madam President, the elections marked the end of Afghanistan's transition and the beginning of the transformation decade, a moment of tremendous importance as the country emerged from over 30 years of war. For the Afghan people, elections represented an historic uh, opportunity to vote for hope, democracy, and lasting peace. However, despite the impressive turnout and enthusiasm of millions of Afghans, the elections turned into a protracted, complex, even at time at times messy process with many unforeseeable challenges. Disputes, disputes related to allegations of fraud in the second round and subsequent political turmoil necessitated substantial efforts to avoid crisis. To this end, with the support of the international community, both presidential candidates signed a joint declaration on 8 August in line with the political and technical frameworks agreed on 12 July. The declaration detailed their unified vision for a full audit based on agreed criteria prepared by the United Nations in the formation of a national unity government consistent with the Afghan constitution. Following the agreement, the Independent Electoral Commission in close collaboration with the United Nations and the international community carried out an audit in accordance with Afghan laws and international standards. In an exercise unprecedented in scale and complexity, the IEC evaluated every single vote from the runoff from 22,828 ballot boxes in all 34 provinces. The audit was conducted under extensive national and international observation and supervision to protect the credibility and fairness of the election results. It has been uh, an immense undertaking involving hundreds of United Nations staff, diplomatic personnel, international and domestic observers, agents from each campaign, and Afghan electoral staff. On behalf of the government and people of Afghanistan, I would like to express my appreciation to all domestic and international observers and staff who work day and night to complete the audit. We are grateful to the international community, particularly the United States and the United Nations, and namely uh, to President Obama, Secretary John Kerry, who were either by phone or directly in touch with candidates, uh, traveled to Afghanistan for an, uh, Mr. Jan Kobish and other UN colleagues for supporting the audit process 
and for their role in facilitating negotiations and cooperation between the two campaign teams. The Afghan people expect these efforts to bring a successful and prompt end to this process. The audit has now been completed and we, wait, we await the announcement of the final results. The Afghan people are eager to move past uh, this difficult chapter and see a new government start its work and the spread of national unity to preserve the gains of the last decade and bring peace and prosperity to all. As President Karzai reiterated yesterday, the Afghan people urgently need to see the process come to a close and a new president and government inaugurated. President Hamid Karzai uh, cheered this morning with uh, the elders, the jihadi leaders, and the head of three branches of the state to discuss election issues and uh, the negotiations between the two candidates. Participants to the meeting expressed concern over a prolonged uh, election process and uh, said uh, uh, people have grown restless and are worried. The meeting decided that the elders meet with the two candidates tomorrow Friday, tomorrow morning, to help to reach a quick arg agreement. Madam President, the last six months have been extremely challenging for the people of Afghanistan. The, election, uh, the electoral impasse has seriously impacted the economy of the country, the security of the country, and the mindset of its people. To ensure future stability, the following issues require the immediate focus of Afghanistan and the in international partners. First, an increasingly dire economic situation exacerbated by the political uncertainty surrounding the election dispute. The past several months have been a steep uh, drop in economic growth, domestic revenue collection, and national income, amounting to billions of dollars in losses and threatening the long-term stability of the country. The government is doing its utmost to keep the financial stability in the country intact, and, uh, but it will be difficult to resolve this impending crisis without international support. <laughs> Second, a worsening security situation. The Taliban and other terrorist and violent extremist groups took advantage of the electoral impasse to destabilize the country with violence. Their use of suicide attacks, improvised implosive devices, IEDs, and rocket mortars in uh, populated areas have caused a surge in casualties of civilian and uh, security personnel making this uh, the deadliest period for the Afghan National Security Forces and the Afghan people since, 2000 and, since 2001. Cross-border shelling has further contributed to a dismal security situation and associated loss of life. While the Afghan National Security Forces has countered the majority of insurgents and uh, in doing so demonstrated ability, professionalism and courage, the shadow of the violence continues to loom large in Afghanistan. Third, a dangerous atmosphere of division and fragmentation. The political impasse jeopardized the resounding hope and enthusiasm so prevalent on the election day and with, with it, the Afghan people's optimism for the country's future. We have worked tirelessly over the last decade to build national consensus in unity. But over the past several months, fears of return to the dark days of the past have reemerged. The Afghan nation would like to see humility, reason, and restraints triumph over mistrust and division. Only this will allow the country to build a peaceful and democratic future. Madam President, while immediate dangers requires, uh, require urgent focus, the successful conclusion of the election process and the formation of a new government will allow for further progress on Afghanistan's long-term priorities and commitments. The country continues to look forward to advancing towards its goal so that it can realize sustainable peace, stability, and prosperity at last. The imminent democratic transition offers an opportunity to reinvigorate efforts towards wider reform, inclusivity, and participation of all segments of Afghan society in the country's future. A new beginning will also uh, 
allow for further progress on the peace and reconciliation agenda so that the armed opposition lay down their arms and contribute to a peaceful and prosperous Afghanistan. At the same time, regional cooperation will remain essential not only to peace and reconciliation, but also to stability and progress in the wider neighborhood. Afghanistan is dedicated to strengthening bilateral and multilateral engagements to enhance development and trade and to counter terrorism, extremism, and source of instability in the region. The upcoming Istanbul Process Conference in uh, Tianjin, China, is an important step in this regard, and we appreciate China's leadership in moving this initiative forward. Madam President, Afghanistan is committed to long-term partnership with the international community which will be crucial to the success of the transformation decade and beyond. We welcome the declaration of NATO in Wales earlier this month to stand ready to train, advise, and assist Afghan National Security Forces after 2014 in its enduring commitment to the country throughout the transformation decade. Ongoing support from our international partners is of vital importance as international forces draw down in the ANSF takes full responsibility for security throughout the country. We also look forward to enhance cooperation between Afghanistan and the donor country. The Ministerial Development Conference to be held in London on 25th November will allow us to reaffirm and renew existing commitments as part of the Tokyo Mutual Accountability Framework and fortify Afghanistan's long-term partnership with the international community. Madam President, nations are building their own future. But in today's world, the international community has an important role to play in helping war-affected countries emerging from conflict. This is why we are here again today in this uh, noble council to debate the situation of, in, uh, on Afghan in Afghanistan. After 13 years of tremendous work and substantial gains, the Afghan people yearn to live in peace and security. As we move forward, stability is a paramount not stability is paramount not only to my country and my people, but also to the wider neighborhood and countries in the region uh, have a ma major stake in peace and security in Afghanistan. It's crucial that the country does not again become a backdrop for pol political rivalries and that the region and the wider international community stand by us to support the successful end of the election process. Thank you, Madam President. I thank the representative of Afghanistan for his statement.